It is great to talk to Jason. If your Tennessee volunteers could finally get their act yeah. together, I think we'd, you'd be in a better mood. But let's talk Dallas. Um, you Were you even a little surprised, Jason, at how seamless – uh, Dak felt he felt so comfortable everything worked were you a tad surprised uh, honestly I wasn't you know I mean he's comfortable he's seen it all you know he's grown from those experiences and you know I, I just I've seen it all all season the way he's grown and you know I was with him his first two years and wasn't there last year and, and you talk about the progression of the quarterback that's what he's doing he's seen it he's grow- drawing off those experiences and the most important thing I think is he's the leader that you want, you know, and, and, and I believe that leadership from QB one that matters. And, uh, he's certainly done it. He's got teammates that run through a wall for him. He's playing at a high level. His anticipation is he's command. He's got all that going for him. Had a great game. You're older actually than, than the new offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore. And some people say, well, he didn't have experience, but I could argue Jason that a former player can really relate to a current player. Um, what do you think, Kellen and Dak, what are the advantages of that relationship? Well, I think, first off, not only was he a former player, they were teammates, Dak and Kellen. So, I mean, you know, Dak really gives Kellen a lot of credit early on in his career as being a mentor, being a coach on the field, so to speak, as his backup. Um, and, and so I think just being aligned, I think your play caller and the quarterback have to be aligned. We've seen it work in this league for a lot of years, but we've also seen it not work. With the, with the quarterback and play caller not being aligned. So they, they have the same approach. A lot of what we're doing is similar. We're just dressing it up different ways. But I think what Kellen added to this offense was the vertical attacking that we had there on Sunday. So uh, we stayed aggressive. Every offense says that. They want to be aggressive. They want to attack. But it showed up in the game against the Giants in week one. We want to build off that. You had a great play down in the red zone where you really sold the block. And then you rubbed off it, and you and I and I said on the air, I'm like, that's Jason Witten. He's going to do that seven times this year, and it's such a smart veteran move. You totally sold it, yeah. and I don't. I just when I watched that, I'm like, God, he must have worked on that. That 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 can't be just something you come up with fly. How many times did you and Dak worked on that camouflaged play? Well, that's the perfect call. You know, we we went on the ball, so we didn't huddle. And when I heard the the signal and, and the play call. You know, I just I had a bad poker face on Colin. I was just like, oh, this is going to be taking candy from a baby right here now. This is this is one. And it worked out perfectly. A little, little bootleg pass and great to get in the end zone. You know, you talked about leadership and I and I and Jimmy Johnson once said he goes, I can't explain it. But Troy Aikman was a good leader. And one of the things I've said on this show is, you know, Dax doesn't always throw the most artistic football, but there is something he every time he goes to the podium. And the Cowboys sometimes have a little controversy. He always says the right thing. He always brings it down. He's always like, I got this. You're around him all the time. I can't define what leadership is, but you're in the locker room. What is it? Well, I think, first off, it's an art to it all. And it's do your teammates respect you enough? Will they, um, will they run through a wall for you? Whatever you ask of them, will they give that to you? And do they do it genuinely? Some people do it because that's the quarterback position and he's the highest played player. And, you know, you're taught at an early age, you know, do what the quarterback tells you to do. But other two people like genuinely feel it, live it, mean it. And that's what Dak does. And Dak understands it's a priority. It's important to him. He does all the little things that great leaders do and doesn't just take that position of, oh, I'm an authority because I'm the quarterback. And so he, he works hard at it. He's very real. You know, I think, you want to see a fraud walk in the NFL locker room, he'll stick out in a hurry, you know, if a guy's not authentic with it, you know, and Dax, he's nothing like that. I mean, he, he's got the response of the, the entire team, players, coaches, staff members at a very young age, you know, and he just does all those things really, really well. And um, it, it means something to him. I, I know it means a lot to me as a veteran player, but when your young quarterback has that approach, uh, man, it makes coming to work. A hell of a lot more fun uh, knowing that he approaches it that way. You know, you are obviously still productive when you left and tried broadcasting and Gronk just left. And I look at Gronk and I look at you and I think Gronk won't say I'm never coming back. There is something about being part of a team. Uh, I think the Cowboys needed your leadership. Uh, that's why I was a big fan of the Amari Cooper uh, acquisition. I think he's a leader, not just a player. And I look at Gronk. 
Take me to what maybe a Gronk is thinking, what you were thinking about the, what that I know everybody thinks football is tough and it's physical and but there is something Jason about the room and the guys and the plane and the Sundays that just drew you back how do you explain what drew you back well that's it I mean there was a love and passion for this game it was just a fire inside me I didn't overthink it I just listened to those emotions and probably as I look back on it I, I, I probably wasn't ready to retire you know it was just a perfect opportunity in Monday Night Football and I think all of us in real time would try to make that decision. You say, heck, let me, you know, know, that's pretty unique opportunity. Give it a shot, you know, and um, I I just have this love and passion for it. You know, Gronk, maybe a little different. I know he's made references of, you know, he's been beat up and the game was kind of taking some of his joy. I never felt that way. I I always had great love and passion. Every day I woke up like, man, I'm the luckiest guy in the world that I get to go do this and do it with a team that I love. Uh, And also, He's got, what, three rings uh, uh, to go along with the, the great career he's had. And so he'll feel it, the emotion of just competing, being a part of it, getting in the locker room. I mean, he, he you know, the energy that he brought, uh, you know, it's hard to fulfill that. And I certainly just listen to my gut. I'm sure he'll do the same thing. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.